I made brownies. I vicariously played several Resident Evil games in the past through friends, but this is my first time going in solo, without help, alone at night. I remember a lot of the problems with the original RE2, so I'm excited to watch how this remake plays out. From a safe distance, of course. Gotta stay calm. This is a horror survival game with stingy ammo and health pickups. If you freak out and your hands get shaky, you will waste precious resources. And at the same time, you've gotta manage meager inventory and puzzle solve your way around escape room style. Uh, here, uh, take the controller for a second. I gotta go to the bathroom. Nah, -uh, I'm not even touching that with a combat knife. Oh, come on, you just gotta sneak past one liquor in your home free. Oh, and say hi to Tyrant for me. As much as this is a horror game, the real trick behind the scares is in the strategizing and puzzle distractions you'll be too deep in before something lunges at you from around the corner. Even with all the ammo in the game and perfect aim, you can't possibly kill every zombie. You have to keep some alive, thin the herd, board up problematic windows, and know when to run. Ammo and other items are scarce and precious, but your inventory space is even more valuable as you can only hold so many things at once. It's risky to scout out new rooms with dangerously low firepower while keeping your inventory open for new goodies, but it's even worse to find a crucial progression item with a full item pouch. Zombies are everywhere and take an insane amount of punishment to bring down. One stubborn zombie took over 12 headshots with Leon's handgun before finally dying for good. You can't get some lucky critical hits blowing up the head with a good shot, but other times zombies just seem to play dead for a while before getting right back up again. I found it helpful to slash them with your combat knife after they fall down to guarantee that they really are dead. To play this game effectively, you need to be paranoid of everything. Don't ever trust that something is dead. Never take your eyes off a threat. Move as slowly and safely as possible, and for the love of God, save your ammunition for the boss fights. Your save file can actually become unbeatable if you needlessly fire away all your ammo at the wrong targets. So you need to decide which threats you can tolerate being alive and what absolutely needs to die. It's a traditional over-the-shoulder third-person shooter while investigating rooms and trying to find puzzle pieces and relics that'll help you progress into the next locked-off section of the environment. Like we said, this game isn't one of those cheap jump-scare horror games. It's the kind that fill you with dread as you reluctantly tiptoe down a dark hallway towards the growling undead. Scares are spaced out between puzzle solving and just enough to distract you from the danger staring you right in the face. Also, you can only save at the typewriter, so don't play it risky and stray too far from that lifesaver for too long, or you might get swarmed and meet your untimely end to losing all of your unsaved progress. Some bosses are no joke and take some serious punishment, while also being capable of destroying you in an instant if you so much as take one wrong step. Now this is miles better than the original just by removing the fixed camera's perspectives and implementing a fluid combat system. You also don't have to wait a day and a half just to open a door. And when you finally win, you've got to play it all over again as Claire. Wait, what? The game looks incredible. The characters all look well modeled and animated, aside from the large variety of different zombies that you can encounter all in different outfits and body types. It's impressive. 
Yeah, I was kind of disappointed in Resident Evil 7 when pretty much every zombie goop monster thing looked exactly the same. But something is so much scarier in Resident Evil 2 when they all look like they used to be real people. I also appreciate how your map updates with items that you've missed if your character has passed by that location but didn't pick it up. It's really helpful for tracking things that you couldn't fit in your inventory or for discovering some extra goodies that you didn't see the first time around. I really like their redesigns of old creatures like the Lickers and the gross G-Virus monster in all its stages. You even unlock a model and concept art gallery mode to see them up close and personal when you're not desperately screaming and firing like a maniac. Or as normal people would say, gross. The game looks gross. It's good gross. Well, as we already mentioned, you will choose either Leon or Claire before starting the game so that you can complete both of their different story campaigns. In Leon's story, you're starting your first day on the job as a police officer in Raccoon City. But due to your astronomical bad luck, it's also the same day that the city is completely overtaken by zombies. In Claire's story, you'll be searching for your missing brother Chris Redfield from the first game. But this kind of means nothing as you quickly find out that he's perfectly fine on vacation smothering himself in mountains of voluptuous eager women. From here, their paths are disappointingly identical for a long time, like about half of the main game. And even then, only some segments are moderately different from the other run. When you choose a campaign in the beginning, you're basically choosing who gets trapped in the police station in the beginning. Though there are unique segments with either character, they don't both come together and tell a greater story, like, at all. In fact, they don't even canonically make any sense together at all. Making matters even worse is the thought that some moments only happen if the other did something that helped or affected the other, but due to this awkward canon rewriting thing going on, neither story is completely without minor plot holes. Regardless, you'll inevitably get separated from the other character, trapped inside a police station, find an escape route, discover an underground corrupt facility, and battle a giant monster infected with this new virus. Neither story felt like a complete experience, but together they didn't do anything but convolute and weaken the main game's plot as a whole. Claire's side has some extra segments where you're protecting a young girl, Sherry, while Leon's side has some extra bits playing as the shady spy, Ada, Aside from that, the maps are all reused, and puzzle piece acquisition is only slightly altered, making both playing nearly identically. This isn't winning any awards for story, that's for sure. It just occurred to me that there was music in this game. Yeah, I was so distracted by the gameplay, I didn't even hear it. Not sure if that's a sign of it being really good or bad. It really did help sell some bits though. It's not like the original game had a really recognizable soundtrack outside of Safe Room, so it didn't really strike any nostalgia chords. But there were some action sequences that had ridiculously unfitting music that sounded straight out of a 3D Sonic the Hedgehog game. Yeah, that just gave me flashbacks to RE5 and 6. If you're afraid of trying this just because it's a horror game, think of it more of a strategy puzzle action game, because honestly, that's what it really is. Do you eat plants when you're mortally wounded? Well, you're apparently not alone, though you're still a freak. This game is for smart players who think before they shoot. I could make all sorts of insensitive jokes right now, but I'm gonna resist the temptation. It's funny because Leon's a police officer. Dude! The positive gamer in me had a great time with Resident Evil 2, giving it an 8 out of 10. Though I really enjoyed the gameplay and structure of the game, a few elements stuck out to me as problematic and prevented me from having as much fun as I wanted, especially when playing the seemingly pointless second story runs. Even still, RE2 is a good time. The critical gamer in me enjoyed Resident Evil 2, but still sees room for improvement, giving it a 7 out of 10. The problems I have seem nitpicky and probably only affect me, but hey, this is my review, so get over it. Plus, a lot of the game is referencing inside jokes and quirks of the original, so it's important to note that not all of those ideas were good ideas. But what do you think about Resident Evil 2? Let us know how your positive and critical sides rate it in the comments below. But if you're... Just too afraid to give it a try... then you're just playing with yourself. You 
I have an idea for a new episode of Playing With Myself. Join the discussion on Discord using the new Patreon perks to nominate and vote for future episodes. Patreon members also get first picks, so check out the links in the description for more information. Also, thanks to our amazing Patreon members Atomic Thomas, Ben, Sid, Denny, Erica, Rowan, and Squad Fan. And Kai! Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Boop!